Hey, Mr. J here. Uh, I think I'm going to do these videos a couple days a week and see how it goes because I think it can work both for students that are local and on campus at Fezzi and the few students that we have that are in China or Korea or maybe at home in the area. And I know we have one student that just can't make it to class because um, of their middle school cohort. So I'm sorry you can't be with us in person in class. I'm still available to you at help and work every day at about 2.20 is when I'll turn my Zoom call on and you should tune in there and, and ask questions. Um, I'm also available in the afternoons or early morning for international students. So really trying to be as available as I can for you. So I'm working on these videos and see how they work. A uh, couple nuts and bolts things for us to talk about. Our textbook is the new Into Geometry uh, AGA by Houghton Mifflin. I think it's a great, great textbook. And you should work on logging in because we'll be using that later this week. And it is your link on my Fezzi, on our my Fezzi page. And so start there. Use your Fezzidin email address with the Fezzidin.org. And then the password for everybody is password one. The word password, P-A-S-S-W-R-D, W-O-R-D, and the number one, everything is lowercase. And that should let you in. And then I'm hopeful that you can change your password yourself or I can change your password later for security. But I wanted to make sure everybody could at least get in this week to make sure because we'll have assignments on there. And that is our textbook for the year. It is only a digital textbook. So if you're interested in getting a hard copy of the textbook, be in touch with me and we can look into that. I have the link for it. It's $134. Um, I don't think we have that in the math budget this year. We're trying to be all digital and virtual because we found that textbooks are not used that often, but please be in touch if that is something that really helps you learn math, okay? Uh, the problem of the week this week is due on Wednesday. It is that, that um, the rectangle made up of squares and please, uh, please work on that. I think it's really good. But what I want to do right now for our first video this week is look into the some the readiness packet that I gave you as an assignment um, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday last week, and it's due today. And I was going to do a little bit of review, not every problem, but a bunch of the problems. And I think we can dig into that now. Okay, so uh, here's our class page, and your textbook link is right there. Your email and password one. Okay, um, but I thought we'd have something else here. Let me see the readiness packet. And I'm using this thing called Kami. Can you see how it's called Kami? It's a Chrome extension, and it may be something that you're interested in using. I mentioned to you guys last week that maybe you could use a stylus or find different ways to make our map digital. I'm using this, uh, this tablet called a Hueon. The Hueon tablet that I got on Amazon for about 50 bucks. They have one that's much smaller and even cheaper. And I think it would work with a Chromebook, but I don't know. And then I can use this stylus to write on the page. And that way we can stay digital. Um, so I'm gonna be grading homeworks this way or demonstrating things using my tablet. So I wanna go ahead and scroll down here a little bit and just go over a few of the concepts here to make sure we're all sort of in the same place in terms of algebra. Throughout this year, we will thread algebra into our course because it's really important to me that when you get to high school or when you get to algebra two next year, that these skills are not so old that you've forgotten some of them. So throughout the year, we will do quadratics and, um, and parabolas and solving, and it's really threaded through our geometry course. Okay, um, looking at equations and sometimes there's no solution or an identity and I hope that stuff is familiar to you. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna solve all of these. I thought maybe I'd do one from this section here and uh, let's see how it goes. So if I start right in here and I wanna see you guys working vertically, okay? So this would be negative four n minus 12 equals negative 19 minus 3n. I think my pen's a little thick, maybe. Let's go up to here. Uh, combine like terms on each side. So I'm going to combine those and have negative 17 minus 4n 
equals negative 19 minus 3n. Let's put the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So I think I'll add 19 from this side to this side. And we'll have 2 minus 4n equals negative 3n. And then we'll add 4n to both sides. I hope I can get my writing a little bit neater for you guys as I figure out how to hold this. Give me a second to get a little more space here. And so that looks like 2 equals n. And I might do a quick check on my own just to see if it makes sense. This would be 2 here and 2 here if we were to substitute it back in. That's 5, so negative 5 minus four times five, so that's negative five um, minus 20. So it looks like we have minus 25 on this side. And on this side, um, two times three is six, nine, negative 19 minus six is negative 25 on this side. So I don't need to see this written check, but I would like to see you do, not that I can see it, but I want you to do mental checks to see if you're moving in the right direction. So this is just basic algebra solving. Um, so I hope you're okay with that. Save for the indicated variable, let's do one of these. Solving for E, there'll be lots of ways to do this kind of problem, but I'd probably consider this E plus F as grouped together, because you know fraction bars are grouping symbols. And we'd get 2A equals E plus F. And then we would subtract F from both sides. So 2A minus F. One little f, I guess it should be a little f, equals e. Okay, so I think you could do that. This one's not that much harder. Down here, intercepts. How do we do intercepts? Well, I like to do parentheses. So I'll have a zero comma something and a something comma zero. That means if the x is zero, that means this would go away. We'd have negative four, correct? And if y is 0, x will be negative 3. I call it like a cover-up method, because we cover up whenever it's 0. So 0, negative 4. Can you tell me what form of the, the equation this is that we're looking at? Do you know this form? It's called standard form. And then we can draw a line in. Do I have a line tool here? Looks like that might be a line. All right, so. It's a really great way to draw graphs quickly if you can find the intercepts. Finding slope, all right. Well, this one has no slope or infinite, right? No slope or I call it infinite slope because it's straight up and down. This will have a slope or an m equal to zero. And these will have, this has a negative slope. I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four. So it's down six over four, negative three halves. All right. Slope calculations. You guys should know how to do this pretty well. The change in y, so six minus negative two over zero minus 12, which is eight over negative 12, more of an eight, which is negative uh, two thirds. Okay, find the slope here. So these are not in slope intercept form. So I would put it in function form or slope intercept form. Uh, let's do this one here. This one's closer, it looks like, to slope intercept form. So I divide everything by two and we'll be left with a y on the right and seven halves x plus 21 and therefore our slope is this piece right there and we use the letter m and we'll call it seven halves all right right in slope intercept form a couple ways to do this i think it's this one's pretty straightforward on the left the one on the right let's do that so i wanted you, you to know something called point slope form which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, that's called point slope form and guess what you need in order to use it? It's a point and a slope. And so we have 
a point and a slope, and we can just insert those in there and then manipulate it to get to slope intercept form. So it's y minus the y value, which is negative one. See, this was y1 right here, so that's what we're inserting. Equals negative one half. That wasn't well done. Let me fix that for you here. Try that again. Negative one half times x minus eight. So there is an equation, but it's not slope intercept form. So we're going to just keep simplifying it now. Y plus one equals negative one half x plus four. Do you see where the plus four comes from? Distributing this to there. And then we'll subtract one from both sides. So our answer is y equals negative one half x plus three. All right, moving ahead. Uh, write it in slope intercept form. I don't know if I'll take any more time right then. The graph. So if we're gonna graph in slope intercept form, um, always start at the y-intercept. Uh, if it's an integer, or you can start from a point that you know is on the line and then use the slope. So let's do this one. Negative two y equals negative five x plus 10. And then let's divide everything by negative two. And we'll get y equals five halves, because the negatives cancel, minus five. So if you can, then you'd start at the minus five, you put your point in, and then use the slope, which is the rise over run. So we'll go up five over two. And you can do another one, up five over two. And then get your straight edge and draw in your line. I think I'm a little bit off there. Can I move that over now? There, that looks better. Okay, good. Uh, point slope form, we already went over point slope form. So we're given a slope and given a point. If you remember the equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Really good equation for you to know, okay? Use it all the time. Where the y that you're inserting would be the six, which goes in here. And the x you're inserting goes in there. And the slope is gonna go in there. So for some of you that might be new, um, and for some of you, um, you probably saw it before. This here is in point slope form. So let's extract from it the point and the slope. If we extract it, it'll be four, negative four, and a slope of negative three. Because it's kind of an opposite feel. You see how it's x minus the value? That's why the x is positive. And if this is a positive four, then we get a negative four. And then the slope just comes down. So here, let's go to our point, four, negative four. And then the slope is negative three, which could be down three over one, or up three, right one, which I think is here, and here, and here. And early on, I said, check your work, make sure you're on track. And what that means is, well, let's draw the line first. Um, let's see if I can put this in here, and get it close, and then I move it over. Um, if you wanna know if you're right, and that's always one of our goals, is put something in. If I put in one five into this equation, it's on the line, so it should work. So if x is one and y is five, is it true? On the left side, we get nine. And on the right side, one minus four is negative three times negative three, that's nine. So I'm pretty confident that I did a good job on my graph. Okay, systems, it's graphing both of these equations and seeing where they intersect. I'm not gonna do that for you. Please see me or ask me if you need help. Substitution, um, it's if they're both equal to y, we set these parts equal to each other. You may need to solve for something, like what do I see here? I see a two goes into each of these. So I would change this equation to negative x plus y equals two, so the y equals two plus x. Modifying this to get y by itself, 
and then inserting that into here with parentheses. Right, that would be 4x plus 3 times 2 plus x equals negative 15. I'll solve for x doing some algebra, and then I'll plug that value of x back in to get the answer. Okay, elimination, really great method, kind of a fun thing to do is to make sure the coefficients are the same. So we're gonna multiply everything here by seven. So we'd have seven X plus 42 Y equals negative 56. Can I see that? And then bring over the other equation, seven X plus two Y equals 24. So the idea is to get the coefficients the same. Since these are the same, I will be subtracting the bottom equation from the top. That'll mean I have 40y equals negative 56 minus 24 will be minus 80. And if we divide both sides by 40, we get y equals negative two. And then we substitute it back in. In this case, uh, think about it. What would you do? I think I see what I would do to this top equation multiply through by two, okay? Uh, these are substituting a little bit of exponents here. Uh, anything raised to the zero is equal to one, right? So this should be just one and a negative exponent. Let me know if you don't know how to do that. This would be, if it's a negative exponent, it means bring it to the bottom and make the exponent positive. This is going to be 4 over 7 squared, which is 4 over 49. And the y to the 0 we don't really care about, so there's our answer. Okay, uh, combining like terms, I hope you know which terms can go together. The variable and exponent must be the same. A little bit of foiling and expanding, I'd like to see how you do on that. Please keep in mind when you have squared, what does it mean? This will mean 5x plus 2 times 5x plus 2, which means we have 25x squared. That's first terms, right? You need to foil. Outer terms will be 5x times 2, which is 10x. 2 times 5x is 10x. And last terms, so that's the outer, inner, and last, plus 4. And these will be combined together, so 25x squared plus 20x plus 4. All right, I hope this is still working okay. Looks like everything is good. We'll do a couple more minutes here. Factoring, really important. So first kind of factoring that you probably learned was to do these double parentheses. We are not solving. Factoring is a way to get to solutions for quadratics. Factoring is finding equivalent expressions. Um, so x and x will give us x squared, and then what multiplies to be 28 and adds to be 11. So this is plus seven plus four. You should have done a lot of practice on that and hopefully that's okay. Factoring. Um, look, on the lookout though, sometimes you might have something that I refer to as dots, difference of two squares. Is this something squared? And is this something squared? Then you'll take the square root of this one, 8x, and put it in both. Take the square root of this one, which is just 1, and we'll have two different signs, a plus 1 and a minus 1. So this hopefully came with some practice too. If you FOIL this, you'll see that the middle terms will drop out. Zero product property, this is why we do factor things to get to um, expressions where we can solve it. So these could be quadratics if we expand it, but the solution is when does this equal zero, and that's at x equals four, and when does this equal zero at x equals three. Um, solve by factoring, so this is gonna be to factor it and then do the zero product property. Using square roots means we take a square root of both sides. I like this method. It relates to something called completing the square, which I will do with you now. We're getting there, almost there. Um, completing the square means 
let's go ahead and find something that will allow us to factor the left side into a perfect square. Um, it could get pretty complicated, but really the idea, if, if a is one, which it is in this case, it's this divided by two, 10 divided by two and square it. So that's gonna be plus 25, right? And if we add 25 to the left, we have to add it to the right. Now you'll see the whole reason we came up with that clever number, that 25, is now we can factor this left into x plus five quantity squared. And you should see that if you FOIL this out, you'll get this expression here. So we found a way to make this into something, a perfect square binomial. And on the right we have four, and now we can take a square root of both sides. There are two roots to that, so x plus five equals two or x plus five equals negative two. That means x equals negative three, or x equals negative seven. Another instance where we can check our answers and see if it works, negative three squared would be nine minus 30. Yep, that works. Negative seven squared would be 49 minus 70. Negative seven works. So in this case here, uh, a little setup before we would be able to complete the square. First off, I'd probably move the three to the other side or the negative three equals three by moving this three over. And then multiply three by negative one, so I get x squared minus six x equals negative three. Remember how we find our special number here that will add to both sides? It's gonna be this divide by two and square it, so it's nine and nine. And so this is x minus three quantity squared equals six. You'll see that this would foil into this term right above. So if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get x minus three equals the two roots of six. So there are not two roots, and now we'll bring three over, because we'll add three to both sides. This is the final answer. This is what you get with quadratic formula. I think this is so much easier than quadratic formula. Um, so you'll have to decide that. Quadratic formula, knowing your A term, your B term, and your C term, and knowing that the answer will be negative B plus or minus the square root, B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So you have to plug that in and do that work. Complementary, supplementary, complementary add to 90, two angles that add to 90, two angles that add to 180. Vertical angles are above each other, that's this one. Adjacent angles are next to each other. Um, sum of angles in a triangle add to 180. Perimeter is the distance around. Area, one half base times height, so there's the height. Um, this is base times height of a parallelogram. And Pythagorean theorem, I assume you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared in a right triangle. Okay, um, we'll talk a little bit more. I think you, you have some formulas here that you can do at the end here, but I feel like my video has gone on long enough for now. How long are we? We're 23 minutes in, which seems a little long for what I'll do for these. But I hope this works for some of you. Uh, I know this was pretty basic algebra for a lot of you, but a good place for us, for us to start the week. Always be in touch. Send me emails. Thank you.